What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video. So I have decided I want to build a roof rack for the Suzuki and mount up a big old light bar on top. Just because with the snow plow on and when I lift the snow plow up, it does cover the pods I put in the bumper. If I raise the plow up enough, it does block the actual headlights on the truck. So I wanna get this light bar mounted up high so I don't have to worry about lighting at all. This thing's gonna light up the night and it'll be much easier to plow having a lot of lights. Let's get started, let's open up the light bar, check that out, make sure everything with that is gonna work. And then we're gonna get some cardboard out, kinda make some templates up for the side pieces for the rack. I kinda wanna follow the roof line a little bit and then maybe in the front kinda come up to where the light bar's gonna mount. I don't know, we're gonna make something look good. So let's open up this light bar and check it out. So there it is. No, it isn't blue. However, it does kind of look cool. It's just a uh, little protective film on there. So like I said, we're going to kind of contour the roof. I'm gonna tie it into the back here. This thing is mounted on the cab, this little headache rack. So we're gonna tie it into that, kind of come out and down, kind of follow the contour, like I said, and maybe come up a little bit in the front to mount the bar right about, I don't know, somewhere right in there. And then I think that'll look pretty good. And then I got some way over there. I got some one by one steel square tube kind of for the bottom of the rack. So should be pretty easy, should be fun to make. Let's grab some cardboard. I wanna start with these sides, get these sides kind of figured out, get those made up, bolt on the light bar. We'll make the mounts into the back here and then we'll take that square tube and make our, basically the floor, I guess, of the rack. I think I got these sides figured out. So pretty basic really, straight. And then the front kind of follows the roof down like that. Hopefully you can see it'll kind of tie into the back right there, into the headache rack and come down just like that, light bar right on the front. So I'm just gonna make this out of eighth inch plate. Let's get some plate out, get two of these cut out. And then, like I said, we're gonna bolt the light bar to it, kind of set it up on the roof make some little mounts into here. We'll bolt it straight to that. And then I think for the front, I might just do some riv nuts into the actual roof, kind of probably right around these corners where it's the strongest. And then maybe one in the center, I don't know, we'll see once we get that far. So let's get these made out of steel.
All right, we got that thing up there. We got the rear mounted up and that's sitting about where I want it. Yes, there is about a half inch of clearance between the roof and that light bar. So that's right about where I want it. I think what I'm going to do now is kind of make the, the floor, I guess you could say, with the one by one crossbars. Probably do one every like six inches or something. And then I'll figure out where to mount. I'll probably come off the one of the front crossbars to mount onto the cab. So that is looking really good. You can see the back kind of conforms to the uh, headache rack there. So that looks good. I'm going to get to work cutting this uh, square tube, but I got something really cool to show you guys. Check this out, guys. We got a new toy in. So I've been eyeballing these for a long time these evolution saws much much better than what i've been using with the abrasive wheel let's open this thing up let's check it out i kind of want to do a little bit of comparison and show you guys the difference between a saw like this and that old abrasive saw i have Well, there it is guys, got the blade on. That was very simple. You just pull this little cover, rotate that out of the way, get the main bolt and bolt it on. So it did come with a couple other things in here. Uh, looks like a new set of brushes right there for the saw. And then it's got this V block, which is gonna be good for doing like circular tube, round tube and stuff like that. And then that, I'm not really sure what that's for. But that's a pretty cool saw. So it's got, you can see the lines down here to uh, zero and then 15, 30, 45. You can rotate this whole thing and get a 45 degree cut. And this is actually a really safe saw. You can see it's got the main guard on the outside and then it's got this movable guard here that as you use the saw, it rotates out of the way. So that is very nice, nice little safety feature there. Let's grab my other saw. Let's grab some material, just some test pieces, and let's do a few cuts on this versus my other saw. All right, we should have cut with the old abrasive saw. Let's grab this temp gauge thing. Thermometer, 140, we'll call it 141, if you can see that right there. Right about 140 degrees, it's cooling off now. Let's do a cut on the new saw, and I do have another cold piece of two inch square tube. Same exact uh, tube right there. So let's cut it, and you can see this one, leaves quite a decent sized burr on the inside and the outside. That one should give a nice clean cut, no burr, and it should be cooler. Let's test it and see what it does.
All right, you can see that was about eight times faster. Let's check the temp. We are 55 degrees, a lot cooler, much, much cooler. And then you can see there, very clean, no burrs, looks really good. Also, another really good thing about this style saw is it doesn't create a bunch of mess of just dust and in the air especially breathing the dust obviously you still want to wear a respirator when you're cutting with this saw but it is much much cleaner how it cuts it doesn't just sit there and grind at the metal to cut it you don't get all the fumes in the shop like you do from the abrasive wheels so i want to give a big warm welcome to evolution they are now a new sponsor of the channel so very very excited to be working with them very excited we got this saw so far it is night and day difference on how it cuts so much faster cleaner and not as stinky also we've worked to bring you guys a discount code saving five percent off anything the website using the code a nimala i'll put it on the screen and down in the description i'll also have a link down in the description box to their website you can go check out all the tools they have they got these saws they actually have the handheld like skill saw style saws for metal which I kind of want to get my hands on one of those too. Try that out for cutting plate and that kind of stuff. They work amazing. I do have the plasma cutter, but that style of saw gives you a nice, clean, straight cut. So one of these days I may get my hands on one of those and show you guys how those work. But nonetheless, super happy to be working with Evolution. Definitely go check out all their tools. That's enough talking guys. Let's grab some one inch square tube get this stuff cut up, get it tacked together, and figure out the rest of the mounts for this roof rack. All right, we got this thing all tacked together, looking good. So last thing we really need to do is put it on and probably build some brackets off of this front bar into the front of the roof. And then what I might do also is on this angle here, just kind of put a little piece of uh, flat bar across or a piece of plate across for a little bit of a shroud. I think that'll kind of complete this front end and it'll come down and kind of be really close to that light bar kind of close it off and just complete the look. So let's throw it on, get some mounts built, get this plate on and get this thing fully welded.
Well, we are completely welded out and good to go. So I ended up adding a little support in the center there just to uh, get some sturdiness and some stiffness out of this this uh, little fairing type of deal there. Now I want to make a little uh, rack or some sort of mount for the spare tire right here. So I'm gonna wash this thing up, it is disgusting. Get that cleaned up and then we'll figure out some way to bolt it on. I'll probably just go in the center and the back right here and then that'll give me room on the sides and a little bit in the front for if I need to tie anything else up here. All right, we got this tire mounted up. So I just made a simple uh, plate here. And instead of welding these studs in, I'm just going to use a nut on either side of that plate. Just because if someday, say I wanna move the tire somewhere else, or if I have something I wanna haul on top, I don't know, just, just thinking in the future, if I ever wanna take a tire off and don't wanna have studs just sticking out of there. So I think that'll work just fine. I'm just gonna put some Loctite on these nuts when I put it together. So we need to get this thing ready for some paint. So I think I'm just going to strip the scale off of these sides, maybe these end caps and the front here. I'm not gonna bother trying to get all inside of here and getting all that stripped. I'm just gonna get that scuffed with 80 grit sandpaper and we should be good enough to start painting this thing. Alright, we are sanded out and ready to clean this thing up and get it painted. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one. I kind of want to try the spray can version of Raptor Liner. So we got the 1K uh, primer and then the 1K Raptor Liner. They actually make a 2K Raptor Liner in a can like this. And you have like a, uh, a little button you press on the bottom to get the hardener into the can and then mix it up but they want 45 freaking dollars for a can. I think these were like 15 and the primer was like 10 or 12. So a lot cheaper. Plus I kind of want to try the durability of the 1K. So we're going to get the truck out of here, hang this thing up off the lift and give it a wipe with the prep ball wax and grease remover. And then uh, primer, I think this stuff says an hour, yeah, 60 minutes to dry. 
And then this stuff says also 60 minutes to dry and then three to four hours before use. The other stuff I've been using in the actual bottle with the gun says like three days to get wet. So it looks like this stuff does cure faster probably because there's no actual catalyst in it. But we'll try it out and this isn't really going to get a whole lot of banging around like a bumper would. It's not going to get beat that bad so it should hold up just fine. But like I said I do want to try that 1k Raptor. All right guys, got this thing sprayed out. It's now the next day, it's all dried up. We're gonna throw it on, but I wanted to give just a little quick review on that uh, Raptor liner in the can. So I actually had to go buy another can. I did three coats on this thing. I used three full cans just because it wasn't covering. I did two coats and there were still light spots. Um, so, you know, if I had to do it again, I'd probably just use the actual Raptor liner. This stuff looks pretty decent. It's not uh, quite as consistent um, out of the can, but all in all, not too bad. It feels like it should be pretty durable. It's hard. I mean, it's dry. It's probably just as hard as regular Raptor liner. So either way, it should work plenty fine. So let's grab the studs for the wheel. We'll get those Loctited on, and then we'll throw the rack on, and we got to wire in the light bar.
right guys, we are done with this rack. So we got the tire mounted up here, nice and sturdy. One thing I did do, instead of running the wiring for the light bar through the roof, I just ran it down here, inside of the little headache rack down in here, and it's nice and hidden, so just didn't want another hole in the roof. So that will work just fine. Also, I mounted the relay just right down here by the other relay for the pod lights and the bumper. So we got the switch mounted right there by the other one. Let's flip it on. There we go. We got lights. So it is dark outside. I'm gonna bring this thing out and let's go see how bright this light bar is. All right guys, we're out cruising around the field. Uh, these are just my headlights. I'll turn these off and turn on the light bar here in a sec once we get over here. So lights off and holy smoke, it's daylight. We got light, boys. This light bar pulls some power though. My uh, idle drops when I turn the light bar on especially with the headlights, or that's uh, the headlights there. I think there's actually an adjustment on the carburetor for an electrical load to uh, idle up a little bit. Must need some adjustment, but there is the light bar. This thing is bright, bright. That is just light bar, no headlights, no fog lights. I'll turn the headlights. There's the fog lights. There's the headlights. There's high beams. It is daytime, boys. These things are bright. Hey, check it out. We got some friends over there. There's a little buck, too. A little, what's that? A little three point? That's cool. Well, that's a wrap, guys. Super happy with how this whole rack and light bar, everything turned out. Having that light bar way up top is gonna be very nice for when I have the plow on. Like I said, when I raise that plow all the way up, it does cover the headlights. So that's the main reason I wanted a light bar way up high. Just so I know for a fact nothing's gonna cover it up and I'm always gonna have light. And with the light bar, the new LED headlights and the pod lights and the bumper, this thing is insanely bright. Super, super happy with it. So like always, if you guys want to check out the light bar, any of the tools I used, all that good stuff, will all be linked down in the description box. So go check that out if you see something in the video you like. Well, I'm going to cut this one here, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. Go smash a thumbs up button. Comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.